The Autotrol Series 155 control is the finest five-cycle control system in the industry. Like all the residential control valves, the simplicity of design and glass-reinforced plastic construction combine to provide a control valve with maximum reliability. Reliability, it's every valve's toughest test. The unique flapper-type valve discs which control the water flow during regeneration resist plugging and leakage. Water pressure holds these valve discs closed, making them virtually leak-proof. A single electric motor runs the time and operation of the control valve. Modular design makes it easier to service and the components readily accessible. The Series 155 control features a unique separation capability. This allows the control module to be removed without disconnecting any plumbing or tank connections. The timer and components are interchangeable between Autotrol residential controls. This includes previous controls dating back many years. This interchangeability reduces service costs and lessens the number of parts inventoried by dealers. The built-in reliability of Autotrol residential controls assures a long life of efficient, trouble-free, uninterrupted soft water for the owner and fewer service problems for the equipment supplier. By knowing how the Series 155 control valve works, you will be able to understand how the other residential controls, such as the Series 168 one-inch control and the 163-164 series filter controls, work as well. Each control is shipped with a comprehensive installation, operation, and maintenance manual. You may want to refer to these manuals during this program. The installation of a water treatment system varies depending on geographic location, on-site considerations, and local codes. You must take these factors into consideration when installing a system. The manuals we provide will help you with some basic guidelines concerning location, plumbing connections, bypass valves, and placing the unit into service. There is also a variety of connectors in various sizes available for quick, easy installation. They include threaded piping boss in brass or neural plastic, copper tube adapters for solder connections, and PVC tube adapters for solvent weld connections. It's best to consult your manual for the options available with each control. When a customer calls for service, there are a few questions you can ask before going out on the service call. First, ask if the unit is plugged into a constant power source. Second, ask if the unit is in bypass. Third, ask the customer if there is salt in the brine tank. And finally, ask whether the water is hard all the time or only on certain days. This helps to pinpoint the problem and can eliminate unnecessary service calls. However, if you do make a service call, Autotrol's residential valves, simplicity of design, and standardization of parts allows servicing with a few basic tools. A Phillips screwdriver, a large and small regular screwdriver, and a needle nose pliers will be all you need. Also, be aware that the problem may not necessarily be in the control valve. It could be in one of the other components of the system, such as the brine pickup tube, the brine valve, the drain line, or other areas. The best place to start is by doing a water hardness test. It is a good practice to test both the hot and cold water. You'll quickly recognize the value of this if the cold water test shows soft water. If the cold water tests soft and the hot water tests hard, it may indicate that the unit capacity is being overrun. This can be corrected by regenerating more frequently or increasing the salt dose. Next, check the brine tank for proper brine level. If the brine tank is overfilled, it indicates a problem in the brine draw system. An absence of brine indicates a brine control problem. The timer is the next component to check. On units with a 440 clock timer, make sure the clock is on the correct time of day and the red arrow is pointing to the service position. When checking units with a 460 demand system, turn on a soft water source and observe the water flow indicator light on the LED display. It should blink on and off. The time of day should be to the closest hour 
and the PM indicator should be on for PM hours. Now you should remove the cover so you can observe the operation of the valve. The majority of problems encountered will probably be related to the brine draw components. The usual indicator is hard water due to improper regeneration and overflow of the brine tank. The Series 155's clear air check is a special feature which allows you to visually observe the brine draw process. If the air check is badly fouled, it should be replaced. Manually index the timer into the brine draw position by depressing and holding the red pointer knob and manually turning the camshaft counterclockwise to the brine and rinse position. During normal operation, a visible flow of the brine solution will be seen as it is drawn from the brine tank through the air check and into the valve. The black ball inside the air check will be bouncing at the top during the brine draw. When observing the brine draw, you should check for air leaks at the base where it screws onto the tank adapter and at the brine line fittings. Air leaks will cause premature air check where the ball drops to the bottom before the brine is drawn out of the brine tank. This will result in an incomplete regeneration and cause eventual brine tank overflow. You can tighten the fittings and add Teflon tape as required to eliminate the leaks. As the brine cycle is completed, the black ball will drop to the bottom and shut off the brine line. This prevents air from being drawn into the softener. To proceed further, you will need to put the unit into bypass by pushing the black bypass knob into the bypass position. If you have a plumbed in globe valve bypass, you will have to open or close the appropriate valves. To release the pressure inside the valve, push on all the valve discs. You can now proceed with further disassembly. Using a regular screwdriver, remove the injector cap. For identification, the injector caps are marked A, B, or C. Take the needle nosed pliers and pull the injector out. You will notice that the injectors are color coded. A is white, B is blue, and C is red. The injectors are designed for various size units and brine draw rates. Generally, white is for small units, blue for medium units, and red for the large units. You will want to inspect the injector orifice to make sure it is not obstructed. The O-rings should also be checked. If the injector has to be replaced, a new one of the same color should be used. The injector screen directly opposite the injector should also be inspected. Remove it with the regular screwdriver. The screen should then be cleaned or replaced. Although you may run across some old style metal or white plastic screens, the new black screen is the proper replacement part. It is designed to fit all the previous controls. For full regeneration to occur, the primary components of the brine draw process, the air check, the injector, and the screen, must be functioning properly. The component that is used to control refill of the brine tank is the brine control, located on the front of the valve. There are two types of brine controls, a 10-pound and a 19-pound. These control the amount of water fed back to the brine tank to make brine for the next regeneration. The amount of salt to be used can be adjusted with a small screwdriver. Each gallon of water can dissolve three pounds of salt, so set the brine controller for the amount of salt to be dissolved. The brine control will then refill the tank with the proper amount of water. To remove the brine controller, simply grasp it with your fingers and unscrew it in a counterclockwise direction. This is how a brine controller works. A rubber ball seats against a rotating set of teeth. As the brine controller is turned up from 3 pounds to 19 pounds, more of the teeth and grooves are exposed. The grooves allow a measured amount of water to flow back into the brine tank during the brine refill cycle of the regeneration. An accurate amount of brine will be produced depending on the regeneration capabilities required for the unit. The rubber ball acts as a pressure regulator. So with any inlet water pressure, the unit will get an accurate flow of water back into the brine tank. If the brine control or ball are dirty or damaged, they should be replaced. The other component of the valve that should be checked 
is the backwash control. It can be removed with a large screwdriver. The backwash control is coated with a number that corresponds to the resin tank diameter. Standard backwash controls are available for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12 inch diameter tanks. The backwash control provides the proper backwash rate for ion exchange resins, which is 4.5 gallons per minute per square foot of bed area. The only exception is for units equipped with an optional turbolator backwash distributor. The turbolator propels mineral beads from the bottom of the mineral bed to the top. Systems equipped with turbolators should use a backwash that is two sizes larger. For example, an 8 inch diameter tank with turbolator would use a number 10 backwash control. The number of grooves molded in the conical area control the flow rate during backwash and the rubber ball acts as a pressure regulator. You will get an accurate backwash rate at various inlet pressures. If the backwash control or ball are damaged, they should be replaced with one of the same size. Another area to check if you're not getting brine draw to occur properly is to put the unit into the brine position and push on the inlet flapper, which is number two. If you hear a noticeable difference and the unit starts to draw brine, it indicates a worn set of valve discs or weak springs. The valve discs and springs should be replaced as a set. Your first step to gain access to the valve discs will be to remove the white nylon nut at the rear of the camshaft the camshaft can now be lifted off. The current camshaft is a single black molded piece. On earlier units, a white segmented type was used. As with the screens, these two are interchangeable. There are also two optional camshafts available. Both are segmented with white and gray cam lobes. The camshaft with one gray lobe is a long rinse version, which extends the slow rinse and purge cycles. The camshaft with two gray lobes is an extra salt long rinse version, which will use double the amount of salt set on the brine control during regeneration. The rinse and purge cycles are extended. It is used for large capacity systems, which utilize large salt dosages. Take note, the camshaft fits into the output connector on the back of the timer. It is keyed to assure it only goes in the proper way. Unplug the timer. Remove the timer by turning the locking pin to a vertical position and then pull it out. The timer then lifts out of the bracket. The next step is to disengage the valve disc springs with the needle nose pliers. Each valve disc has one spring, except the large inlet and outlet flappers, number two and three, which have two springs, one on top of the other. When the springs are disengaged from the valve discs, you have to remove 11 Phillips screws. The top plate will lift off and expose the valve discs. Worn or damaged valve discs should be replaced with a new valve disc set. To reassemble the control, just reverse this procedure. Another feature of Series 155 control, which will assist you with replacement or service, is the quick release control module. This allows the valve body module with all its moving parts to be replaced quickly and easily without disconnecting the plumbing connections, distributor tube, or brine system. This is achieved by removing one locking bar. Remove the screw in the locking bar. Apply downward pressure on the module and pull the locking bar out. Using a rocking motion, lift the control module from the tank adapter if the O-rings come off, put them back into the tank adapter sockets. Be sure all O-rings and rubber parts are lubricated with silicon lubricant. Do not use petroleum-based lubricants, as they will damage the parts. To replace the control module, simply reverse this procedure. Now that you have finished the basic servicing, let's look at the two most common timers found on the residential valves. They are the model 440 clock timer and the Model 460 Commander, a metered demand system utilizing state-of-the-art microprocessor technology. First, let's look at the 440 clock timer. The major components of the 440 clock timer are the tripper arm timer knob with time arrow, 
the skipper wheel with skipper pins, and the red pointer knob. There is a six-day timer, which is used in applications where regeneration is desired every day, every two days, every three days, or every six days. You can also use a seven-day timer, which allows regeneration on an exact day of the week. The frequency of regeneration is determined by unit size, number of people in the home, or on other factors. To set a 440 timer, you pull all the skipper pins on the skipper wheel out. Rotate the skipper wheel until the day arrow points to number one or the correct day of the week. Then, depress the skipper pins for the days you want a regeneration to occur. To set the correct time, pull the timer knob out and rotate it until the time arrow points to the actual time of day on the 24-hour dial. Release the timer knob so it engages the gears and moves back in. Make sure the gears are in and the timer is functioning properly. The unit is set for regeneration at 2.30 a.m. If you want regeneration to occur at an earlier or later time, you simply adjust the clock accordingly. For example, to regenerate two hours later at 4.30 a.m., set the clock two hours earlier than the actual current time. To initiate a manual regeneration or guest cycle, you simply depress and hold in the red pointer knob and turn the camshaft counterclockwise to start. The unit will regenerate right away and it won't affect the normal regeneration schedule. The tripper arm assembly, skipper wheel, and motor may be replaced if necessary. Consult the service manual for a parts diagram of this assembly. The 460 Commander is a demand-initiated control that utilizes a single-piece meter to measure actual water usage. The control features a microprocessor or miniature computer to monitor daily usage and calculate a reserve sufficient to assure a constant treated water supply to the user. The reserve is variable. It changes as water usage increases or decreases. Actual daily water usage is entered into the microprocessor. An average of the previous seven days usage is used to calculate the reserve. The reserve is constantly adjusted and the result is a system that never regenerates too late or too soon. The customer will enjoy a continuous supply of treated water and realize a substantial savings in salt and water. The latest version of the 460 Commander features Novram technology. In the event of a power outage, the Novram will store the computer data until power comes back on. The time, capacity, hardness setting, plus remaining capacity and reserve will all be kept in memory for as long as the power is off. A battery backup is not required. To program the Novram 460, locate the access panel in the upper left-hand corner of the control, then gently open it from the bottom. You will observe a vertical row of labeled header pins and a jumper that will be moved to perform the programming. With the jumper on the two pins to the right of the word time, set the time of day to the closest hour by depressing the black set switch below the display. A PM indicator will come on to indicate PM hours. The 460 will automatically regenerate at 2 a.m. If regeneration is desired at an earlier or later time, you adjust the clock accordingly. For regeneration at 4 a.m., two hours later, you set the clock two hours earlier than the actual time of day. Remove the jumper from the top two pins and place it on the next set to the right of the word hardness. Depress the black set switch until the proper hardness value appears. The hardness range is from 1 to 99 grains per gallon. Remove the jumper from the pins next to hardness and place it on the pins opposite the word capacity. Depress the black set switch until the correct capacity in kilograins is displayed. The capacity is from 1 to 99 kilograins. The capacity of the unit is based on the salt setting on the brine control and the resin capacity of the unit. For example, a one cubic foot unit with the brine control set for six pounds of salt would have a capacity of 20 kilograins or 20,000 grains. You would set your microprocessor to 20 for this example. 
Refer to the chart in the 460 owner's manual for suggested salt settings. After capacity is set, return the jumper to the top set of pins opposite time. The unit will not operate if the jumper is not returned to time. The bottom three sets of pins are used for factory testing. Do not use these pins. The water flow indicator on the display will flash whenever service water is flowing through the valve. This provides easy verification of meter operation. A guest cycle or manual regeneration may be initiated by depressing the red pointer knob. After a few minutes, regeneration will start. The unit will return to service in about two hours. If you are manually advancing the camshaft, you should not advance the red pointer knob directly to the conditioned water position, six o'clock. Instead, move the red arrow just past purge, about seven o'clock, and let the timer advance itself into the conditioned water position where an internal switch will turn the motor off. In the event of a service call on the 460 Commander, use the same hot and cold water test procedure outlined previously to confirm that the unit is not regenerating or if it is being overrun. Then, inspect the brine tank to see if the unit was regenerated without salt. The red pointer knob should be in the conditioned water position. Open the access panel and check that the jumper is installed in the time position. Move the jumper to hardness and capacity to confirm that the proper values are programmed. The time of day should be within one hour of current time. Now, open a soft water tap and verify that the flow indicator is flashing. If it is, the turbine is operating properly. If it doesn't flash, the turbine may be obstructed. To confirm that the turbine is obstructed, you should disconnect the Hall Effect probe from the turbine housing. Using a spare turbine assembly to test with, plug the probe into the receptacle and blow through the test turbine. If the flow indicator flashes, the microprocessor is okay, and you should remove and clean or replace the stalled turbine. Since the 460 will regenerate only when necessary, here is a simple way to verify that regenerations are occurring. Tape a string to the camshaft and check it after a few days. Every wrap around the camshaft indicates that a regeneration has occurred. A common problem is for the programmed capacity to be different from the actual capacity as set on the brine controller. For example, a capacity programmed too high in relation to the brine control setting will result in a pattern of soft water for a few days, then hard water for a day or two, followed by soft water. You solve this problem by bringing the programmed value in line with the actual brine control setting. The programmed capacity should correspond to the proper brine control setting. A complete troubleshooting guide is included in your owner's manual. You may run across existing 460 timers, which are earlier models that have either jumper wires or three rows of jumpers. These units are also easy to program, and troubleshooting is the same. You will want to consult previous owner's manuals for actual instructions on programming. Now it's time to turn our attention to the Autotroll Model 200 Backwash Distributor, which is more commonly known as a turbolator. This is the device we referred to briefly during our discussion of the backwash control. You will find it is included on many water conditioning systems. The turbolator is located on the distributor tube and functions during the backwash cycle. As mentioned previously, it propels the resin beads from the bottom of the mineral bed to the top. During this process, it scrubs small particles of dirt and iron off the resin beads while constantly turning over and reclassifying the resin bed. Remember, you have to use a backwash control two sizes larger than the actual tank diameter on turbolator equipped units. An auxiliary backwash control is also available, primarily for filter units requiring high backwash rates of between five and 10 gallons per minute. The auxiliary backwash control screws in the valve where the regular backwash control normally goes. For more information on this optional component, consult the Series 163 Owner's Manual. Autotrol bypass valves are available for all residential controls. 
The bypass valve fits on the control for easy and quick installation. It is easily disassembled by removing the end knob and unscrewing the end cap. This will allow the valve stem to be removed for inspection. Occasionally, O-rings may need replacement. Before reinstalling the valve stem, be sure to lubricate the O-rings with silicone lubricant. All the major components on the valve are marked with a five-digit code number. This code number indicates the date of manufacture. The first three digits indicate the day, and the last two indicate the year of manufacture. This component, for example, was manufactured on the 35th day of 1989. 